I wouldn't accept the premise that Democrats would have held the House if they hadn't tried health care okay. reform. I think in an atmosphere where they had total control of government and you had an economic crisis that was going to mean that conditions were going to get worse no matter what they did, people were going to turn against the incoming the party, party in power. And blame the party in power. And I think sure. they would have lost Congress no matter what they did. Even I, without pursuing health care reform? Absolutely. Okay. I don't think they had any chance to hold on to Congress. Um, in, when, when you when you take power when the economy is going off a cliff, I think they would have lost Congress no matter what. So the question was, what are they going to do with the two years in which they have a majority? Are they going to really try to change the country in a lasting way? And they did. This was their chance. This was their chance. Yeah. You had, like you said, a lot of people in even the Democratic Party, let alone the whole political establishment, urging them not to do this. It was the conventional wisdom, really, in Washington that he was making a huge mistake by going forward with health care reform. I think he saw it as a moral imperative. I think he was right to do it. There were moments when he had to decide whether he was going to go forward. Health care reform was dying by the fall. Uh, you had Democrats spending month after month after month after month trying to get Republicans to agree with them on a bill, saying, what can we do? What will you sign? You write the bill. We'll put our name on it. What, you know, we'll give you a foot massage. We'll be serving you drinks. Right. You, you, you tell us what you need. And eventually, one by one, every Republican dropped off, and they asked the remaining Republicans, what could you possibly agree to? And they said nothing. They're basically, they, they were holding on to Olympia Snow there, the they're former senator Olympia from Snow, Maine. Olympia Snow would yeah. only sign a bill if other Republicans would go along with it. So her terms were essentially that Chuck Grassley and other Republicans go along. So she couldn't. They said to her, what can you, what can you, what can you give us? And you said, you've got to get other people. And the other people said, no. We're not doing this. Because Mitch McConnell had gone to them and said, we need to have unified opposition. Mitch McConnell said openly, he described his theory, which was that if people in both parties were signing on to these bills, the public would get the message that people had solved the problems and there were no real controversies and this was bipartisan and it was good and they would support Obama and they would vote for his party. Conversely, if Republicans opposed everything, they would see a lot of conflict in Washington. They would think things were going badly. All the measures were partisan and they would punish the governing party. And McConnell was right. And you went through uh, all the machinations of getting to the signing of the Affordable Care Act. Yep. And in, initially there was this thing called the public option, right. uh, which was attached to essentially Mitt Romney's version of health care reform. Yeah. Uh, in Massachusetts, yeah. which which people call Romney Care, right. uh, which in, in the heart of that is uh, an insurance mandate that forces you to buy insurance, and right. uh, that insurance mandate is something that not only Mitt Romney supported in right. the past, but other Republicans. It was uh, right. somewhat of a conservative health care reform concept, uh, and you talk about that in the book a little bit. Even though mm -hmm. President Obama had essentially a conservative health care concept right. at the heart of his health care reform package, he was still struggling to line up Republican support. And so they give up the public option to sort of get it to the finish line. Right. Um, pretty fat. I mean, of all the legislative uh, pieces of business he had to tackle during his administration, this was perhaps the most fascinating piece of business to watch from a legislative standpoint, Th just that's from start right. to finish. And at the beginning, like you say, Obama favored the public option. So when Republicans had to explain what they didn't like about, him, about Obama's bill, they said the public option. He said, the rest of the, the bill, it's Romney Care, we kind of like that stuff. It's this public option that makes it unacceptable because they thought that was going to always be part of the bill. So then Obama says, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll cut that out. And he, I think he needed to because you had a handful of of Democrats who also opposed that, and they needed 60 right. votes to get it through the Senate. So they needed- You needed Ben Nelson. Needed every yeah. single Democrat, right. plus some Republicans. So he jettisoned that, and then Republicans came up with different reasons to oppose the bill. Um, it's notable that the bill, even the one that Paul Ryan was supporting at the beginning of 2009, was very similar to what, what Obama ended up signing. Um, but, but it was really the same thing that happened when Bill Clinton tackled health care reform in 1993 to 1994, which is Republicans ended up repudiating ideas that they themselves had proposed. Because these ideas only served the purpose of allowing Republicans to say, we're for something, just not your bill. 